thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 8. What we have here historically is once again, the people of God, the leaders of Israel, are forsaking the Lord, and God is sending the nation of Assyria to come in judgment. We're told in verse 6 that the people of God forsook the living waters in Shiloh, and now God is telling them in verse 13 that they should just fear God. Verse 20 is telling, God is telling the people to not listen to mediums, verse 19, those that bring witchcraft because they have no light in them. Today I wanted to speak about obe obedience to God's word. As God said, don't listen to people with rich witchcraft, mediums, uh, people that are of the occult, because there's no light in them. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, came in John 8, 12 and said, I am the light of the world. There is no way we can obey God without Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verses 4 and 5, that he was the vine and we are only the branches. You often see me out here in a wooded area, not too far from where I live. And I often say there's dead branches on the floor because they're not connected to the vine. If I see the vines up above me, they are connected to the tree and they're alive. And that is the same way in our spiritual life, that if we're apart from Christ, we are spiritually dead. We're not connected to the vine. Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 39, to search the scriptures for they testify of him. Many people forget that Christ is spoken of in the Bible from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to Revelation chapter 22, verse 21. All of scripture testifies of Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 4, we are told that in the days of Moses, Christ was the spiritual rock. Moses himself, we're told in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 26, that he forsook, forsook all the riches of Egypt and would rather suffer the reproaches of Christ. He foresaw the day when Christ was going to come. So all of Scripture testifies of Christ. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, we're told that Jesus is the seed that would come in between Satan and the woman and conquer the devil, the seed of the woman. He is the seed of Eve. So my friends, remember today that obedience to God's word comes through Christ and him alone. As I said before, verse 13 of Isaiah chapter 8, it speaks of fearing God. I have worked with troubled kids for almost 28 years now in a group home, residential facility, and now in a public school system in the inner city. And I can tell you of a lot of children that fear their parents, uh, especially fathers, because of abuse. This is not the kind of fear that God wants of his children. My daughters are older now. They're in college. They're 22 and 19 years old. My closest times with them growing up, looking back when they were little, was when they were in need, when they were in trouble, when they were weak, when they needed milk, when they needed Infamil, when they were sick, whether it was with endoscopies, colonoscopies, um, my other daughter, my little one, had kidney stones when she was born, taken to, to the doctor. That's when I felt closest to them, when I saw their needs. A little later on in the book of Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15, and Isaiah chapter 66, verse 2, the Bible speaks of God is so lifted up and high and mighty, but he is close to those who are of a broken and contrite heart and who tremble and fear at his word. That is how our Heavenly Father wants us to come to Him, with our needs, troubled. As I said before in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 6, the people forsook the living waters of Shiloh. In John chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, Jesus Christ had confronted a woman at a well in Samaria. And this woman was, Jesus said in John 8, and John 4, verses 13 and 14, that anyone that drinks of this water from that well will thirst again but whoever comes to me will never thirst again a little later on a few verses later in john chapter 4 verse 18 jesus had said to this woman bring your husband here and the woman said i have no husband jesus said you've had five husbands and the man that you live with right now is not your husband 
You see, we in life at times enjoy ourselves with many husbands. What I mean by that is we enjoy ourselves with the pleasures, the people, and the prosperity of this world and never are satisfied. This woman was never satisfied with the waters that this world had to give her. No amount of men could bring her satisfaction. She was never satisfied. But Christ told her that she would be never thirsty again if she came to the living water, which was Christ. And I love her testimony at the end of John 4, verse 39, where it says that many people in the Samaritans in her village came to know Christ because of her testimony. God loves to use broken people. God loves to use people who walk by faith. The world says, as the doubt, as Thomas, you know, Thomas, the apostle Thomas is often called the doubting Thomas. That's how we get that phrase, doubting Thomas, in John chapter 20, verse 25. He said, I will not believe that Christ rose unless I put my hands in his side. The world says, I will believe it if I see it. We as Christians say, we see because we have believed. We walk by faith and not by sight. I love the story of the woman who was very sinful in Luke chapter 7. Long story short, she came running into the house of a woman, a man by the name of Simon, a Pharisee. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. She came crying, drying her tears with her hair. The people were saying, Master, you don't know what kind of woman this is. She was probably a woman of the night. But Jesus said in Luke chapter 7, verse 47, this woman has learned to love me much because she has seen how much she's been forgiven of much. My friends today, this is who God wants. Those that fear him, those who tremble at his word. Not in the sense that we are afraid that God is going to come down with the hammer and nail on us all the time we do wrong. But we're going to respect him and be in awe of him of who he is and who we are. I hope today's devotional video, my brothers and sisters, will encourage us all to obey the word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2 tells us not to take away anything from the word of God, not to add to anything in the word of God, something that's repeated at the end of the Bible in Revelation chapter 22 verses 18 and 19. Obey the word. Don't listen to this world. We're living in a political season here in America. We even, the best of Christians can get caught up with this political cycle and the things of this world. There's an old saying that sometimes Christians are so earthly minded, they're not of any heavenly good. We need to be reminded, as Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 tells us, our citizenship is in heaven. God bless you all. Stay strong in the Lord this day.